This is the HP ProBook 630G8, a laptop I had never heard of until it entered my studio a few weeks ago. And I must say, I don't know why. This laptop is thin and light, has one of the best trackpads I've used on a Windows-based laptop, and has well above the average battery life capabilities for the on-the-go creator. Not only are we going to look at the usability and build quality of this laptop, but I have also taken the ProBook 630 and run over 14 plus benchmark tests to create the ultimate creator-focused review for the ProBook. We're gonna look at video editing and photo editing, design, and more. Let's get rocking. <laughs> Little hat tip to my brother there. If you can guess what YouTube channel that style intro comes from in the comment section, I'll be impressed. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. If that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Also, if you're curious about the exact pricing or availability of the ProBook 630, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase of that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Thin, light, and durable. The ProBook 630 is something to reckon with. The all aluminum chassis is fitted to precision. Everything about this laptop really shouts premium. It's lovely beveled edges, single hinge for opening and closing the screen, and speakers positioned on the top of the keyboard deck make this laptop really stand out. Not many devices in this size or form factor take thought of the elements that really matter to a you know small laptop for on-the-go productivity workstations. Concerning the beveled edges, they are sharp, but not at risk for scratching or cutting your hands. And as crazy as it may sound, I have cut my hands on a laptop before. I love how the angled edge on the front lip of the keyboard deck angles around naturally into the side panel. It's such a neat design choice. Um, and then the keyboard deck and side panels are one solid piece of aluminum, um, but the bottom panel, which is mounted securely um, to the beneath the computer, the keyboard deck, excuse me, um, it is mounted by five small Phillips head screws, and it's a separate piece of aluminum. Weighing in at 2.51 pounds and at a thickness of 0.62 inches thick, this is the lightest laptop I have ever reviewed in my studio. But what is awesome is that it feels so solid. While being so light, um, which is not the easiest feat to accomplish. The 54 watt hour battery should give you roughly 10 hours of web browsing battery life and about six to seven hours of design and video editing life um, out of this battery. The screen opens and closes smoothly with one hand and due to the singular hinge, it has no screen flex. A moment ago, I mentioned the angled front bezel. The top of the screen bezel has the same angled edge, which is really neat because when you close the screen, it makes a perfect ledge, which allows your fingers to easily grip the screen to open it. This is such a big deal to me because it shows thoughtfulness in design. They didn't design the computer and then say, oh, whoops, we need a way for you know somebody to open the screen. Let's put a notch there so they can fit their fingers and pull it open. They built that into the design, which I think is awesome. Audio is an important experience, especially when you're on the go and you forget your headphones. To me, there is nothing worse than trying to design and edit photos with bad audio, whether I'm listening to music, a sermon from one of my favorite pastors, or catching up on Akimbo from Seth Godin. Good audio is crucial and the Pro Book delivers. Here's a quick sample of the keyboard deck speakers. That's coming at you right now. This laptop is 85% perfect. Here is the first 12.5% of why it's not perfect. And in a second, I'll show you the second 12.5%. According to my test, the ProBook 630 with the full HD display can reach 295 nits at full screen brightness and has a color gamut range of 68% sRGB, 50% Adobe RGB, and 50% DCI-P3 at an average Delta E rating of 3 0.09. If you're planning on this being your on-the-go creator workstation, that color gamut range is a little sad. But with a color accurate monitor at your home office or work office, it would make a stellar combination with this laptop. You could be out on the go, do your shoot, get back into the studio, and then do your color grading on your external monitor, which would be color accurate. 
Um, and I'll link a few in the description below if you're curious about my recommendations. The second 12.5% comes at an absence of an SD card slot. Being out on a photo or video shoot, it is often very nice to have an SD card slot built into your laptop, which is not the case here. You can see the ports coming up on the screen now, um, which as you see is a good selection of ports, but misses the creator coveted SD card slot. It does have an SC slot, which is um, for like major corporations with two-factor authentication security and it basically lets you carry around a chip card and gives you access to your computer for like you know sensitive information or government contracts or whatever, uh, but in no way helps you download your images from your computer without using a dongle. So to me, shucks, right? To say I like the keyboard and trackpad combination is a bit of an understatement. This keyboard is wonderful. It is extremely reminiscent of the HP Omen keyboard, which if you watch my dedicated review, I majorly fanboyed over. The keyboard is so quiet. I really dig the soft touch keys, plus they are firm and snappy when pressed. And this is something to point out because that's not super common amongst all keyboards and keycaps. Often you'll find the keys having a wobble on the top on the keycaps whenever you're like resting your fingers on it. The ProBook does not have this. Basically when you press the edge of the key with a keycap wobble, it makes the key press feel mushy and uh, really non-committal. With the ProBook, no matter where you push on the key, you get that satisfying firmness of the press and then release. So it's, it's fantastic. The trackpad is great. Sadly, it does not have the matte finish like on the HP Omen, but it is just the same in regards to the press click sensitivity. A lot of trackpads in this form factor are kind of mushy, uh, which makes using the laptop for graphic design and photo editing a little tricky. The ProBook once again has that nice firm click activation on the trackpad, just like the keys. Okay, here is an audio sample of both so you can hear it for yourself. If you're enjoying this video and getting some value and you want to save some money on your next PC or laptop purchase, then make sure you text in the word hashtag deals to 850-306-4644. That's my texting community, and I text out the latest laptop deals that I find around the internet every single week. Also, if you don't want to miss a single video, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to catch the future uploads. This laptop does come with a 720p webcam, so you won't miss out on those crucial virtual meetings if the need arises. Now that we have gone through all of the details concerning the build and usability of this laptop, let's get into some of the performance specs. The ProBook 630 I'm reviewing comes with the Intel 11th Gen Core i7 1165G7 with four cores and eight threads. Intel Iris Xe integrated graphics, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 SSD. In my experience, Photoshop is the best way to test a laptop's usability inside of design-focused tools such as the full Adobe Design Suite, including Illustrator and InDesign, plus other tools like Affinity Design and Photo, Sketch, and Figma. In the Photoshop benchmark, the ProBook 630 is sitting near the lower end of my mid-range scores, capturing a 505 in the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. Looking at the other laptops surrounding the ProBook, you will see laptops such as the Acer Spin 5, the 2020 MacBook Pro with its Intel i5 processor, and the MSI Modern 15. Note that these laptops are all very capable of Photoshop. They are just not going to impress the neighbor kids when it comes to benchmark show off and flexing. So know that this laptop will handle Photoshop very well. In Geekbench single core and multi-core, the ProBook 630 handled itself well, attaining a 1,438 on the single core benchmark, placing it almost at the top of my charts, which is really impressive for this laptop. And on the multi-core score, it was able to pull off a 3449, which places it almost at the bottom of my charts. So it is really strong in single app performance, but with its four core and eight threads, this is not a multi-core beast by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, and you might be thinking, well, if it has this awesome single app core processor, wouldn't it kill it for, you know, like 3D modeling and 8K video editing? Well, the thing is, when it comes to that, you want to complement your laptop with a really strong GPU. This has integrated graphics. So although it's going to perform very well in apps like Photoshop, um, web browsing, productivity tasks, things along those lines, uh, because it doesn't really require a GPU, when you get into those GPU intensive tasks, you're going to run into a lot of bottlenecks. So... That's a little explanation on why we see such high benchmark 
in the CPU, but then when we get into real world tests, you see lower scores compared to other laptops. Now onto my favorite portion of the benchmark test, video editing in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. First, I'm gonna start off with a playback test. For this test, I'm gonna take a nine minute 1080p clip adding some motion graphics and then play it back in the timeline at full quality. This clip contains 16,177 frames in total with 7,240 of those frames being motion graphics. During this test, the ProBook 630 saw drop frame rates as follows. At full quality, four drop frames. At half quality, zero drop frames. And at fourth quality, zero drop frames. Now, I ran this test in 1080p because that's the classification I feel this laptop fits strongest into. I ran the 4K test. We had decent export times. We had decent playback, but it wasn't great. And so for me, if you're picking up this laptop to edit video, I'd recommend 1080p. If you want to get into a heavier video editing production, then I would make sure you get a laptop with a dedicated GPU. To render out the 7,240 frames of motion design in that project took nine minutes and 57 seconds. Moving on to the 1080p export test, I'm going to take a 9 minute 4K clip, place it in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, then export both out at 1080p YouTube settings. Premiere Pro 1080p to 1080p export took 1 minute and 58 seconds, a very quick export time, and in DaVinci Resolve it took a little bit longer at 10 minutes and 27 seconds. Intel is very optimized for Premiere Pro, not as optimized for DaVinci Resolve, which is why we're seeing such a big split in those export times. Earlier we took a look at the thermals of this laptop, but no review would be complete without checking out the noise that this laptop produces while running these programs and benchmarks. At idle, there's no fan noise. Uh, during web browsing, it's about 37 to 40 decibels depending on how heavy your web browsing, how many tabs you have open, so on and so forth. During Photoshop benchmarks, about 47 decibels uh, fan noise. During the Premiere Pro, 1080p to 1080p, about 47 decibels. And DaVinci Resolve Export, about 47 decibels. The HP ProBook 630 G8 is a laptop that comes out of the box on the go ready for 1080p video editors, photographers, and designers with a solid 10 hours of battery life for productivity tasks and about six to seven hours of design and editing battery life. It will keep you off the charger quite a while. The keyboard and trackpad are truly incredible, making this laptop so comfortable to use. The only sacrifice you will be making if you pick up this laptop is the lower color gamut range. However, when your budget allows, like I mentioned, you can pick up that color accurate external monitor. So that when you are back in the studio, you can make sure that your color grading is spot on. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, like I said, affiliate links in the description below. If you do make a purchase of that, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future uploads from, for tech and tools for creative professionals. And if you want another video from me or talking more about comparing this to other laptops, you can click on the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep creating, keep designing. My name is Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.